Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk on how you can expand your toolkit as a Java developer. So to start off, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ming. I'm an engineering science student at the University of Toronto, majoring in machine learning. For the last 16 months, I've been um, on co-op at Red Hat. I've been working on the Java monitoring team on a product called TieStack. Maybe it's because I'm a software engineer. I love playing video games. Um, and so I wanted to start off my presentation talking a bit about a video game that I love to play. This is <laughs> Minecraft. Minecraft is a first-person 3D sandbox video game developed by Tiger Games. Um, I love this game because it is very simple and easy to play. Um, it is very intuitive, but also an incredibly challenging game. Um, I have been doing this for the last couple of months with my friend Alexa, or my friend Fred, and I'm going to show you how to play this game. A while back, my friend Fred and I played Minecraft. This is a new release of the game that they are working on. And we were just a bit curious. I pulled up a source Docker image on GitHub, which used the latest Minecraft server jar. Then I configured it with the mods that we wanted. And I finally, I deployed it on Docker. And everything was working as expected until the container shut down on me. Um, it was stuck in an exited state. Um, so the first thing I did was I checked the logs but the uh, logs were unhelpful. The error did not give me any new information. I inspected the container, but that was also fruitless. Um, it was configured exactly how I expected. So I was in a bit of a pickle. If only I could peek inside my container and see what was really going on. Now, let me ask you all a question. Put your hand up if you've ever experienced an unexpected container shutdown like this one. <laughs> uh, put your hand up if you've ever needed a little help troubleshooting a performance issue in a containerized environment. Okay, well, Crystat is the perfect tool for you. After all that work of building and packaging your application, deploying it in a cluster, maybe a service becomes unavailable or your server has unexpectedly high response times, the natural next step is to look inside your code base to determine exactly where this specific bug or bottleneck is. But where do you start? Uh, just like in my Minecraft server crashing situation, uh, the logs might be unhelpful. So this is where Crystat comes in handy. Crystat is a container-native tool which utilizes JDK flight recordings to help you see under the hood of a Java virtual machine and the Java applications running on it. Today, to start off, I'll go through some technical background required to understand Crystat. I'll introduce JDK flight recorder and its shortcomings on the cloud. Then I'll talk about Crystat, how it addresses these shortcomings, and some of its key features. And finally, we'll put the pieces together and we'll go through a demo so uh, we can see how I, as a user, would use Crystat to profile my Minecraft server container. Okay, what is JDK Flight Recorder? JDK Flight Recorder is a virtual machine application that is powered by the Java Virtual Machine and is used to quickly Thank you. 
But it wasn't exactly designed to work in the classroom. So it's been built for a different purpose. The same purpose the JFR is enabled in a kitchen. So we're going to have this kitchen that we have built for this purpose. Um, so it's going to be completely
Collection Center. Uh, you'll receive notifications when you create, stop archive recordings, or like when a target is discoverable. Um, and also any warnings and errors that you might come across. The top right corner also includes the settings where you can set preferences, uh, such as theme, locale, and notification center settings. And there's a help button next to that where you can take a look through our quick start tutorials. For example, if you want to learn how to start a recording, or you can take a guided tour through all of the Cryostat UI. And this is also the first thing that pops up when you open Cryostat. On the left, we have a list of all the views uh, that display different information. For example, we are in the topology view here, where you can see a visual representation of all the discoverable targets. Uh, when you first start up Cryostat, only the automatically discoverable targets are listed in the topology view. These are discovered through our discovery mechanisms, such as Podman, Docker, Java Discovery Protocol, and the Cryostat agent. However, users can also create custom targets. Uh, this is done by selecting the book icon on the top left and providing a connection URL and a name for the target. In topology view, we see the targets, their pods, and their realms, which are the aforementioned discovery mechanisms. For the sake of our demo, I've deployed the Minecraft server application by attaching it to a Cryostat agent instance. And uh, we can see everything is up and running. Cryostat is self-discoverable through the JDP client. Minecraft, the Minecraft server application is auto-discoverable through Cryostat agent and also through remote JMX. Uh, that's why there's two targets for one application. So you'll see they have the same JVM ID, but different connection URLs. Uh, for ease of use, you can click and drag the icons or use the control bar to adjust the graph. Uh, by selecting a target, you can see the properties associated with this target, uh, the connection URL, alias, JVM ID, labels, and more. The connect URL is a JMX service URL that Cryostat uses to connect to the application. The alias is the name associated with the application, and the JVM ID is a unique hash ID that is calculated by Cryostat, Cryostat after it successfully connects with the application. And this is used internally to uniquely identify the target. There's also the ability to filter the targets you want to see in topology uh, through these properties. Now, if you want to see the recordings uh, for each target, you can navigate to the recordings view, which conveniently has a target drop-down menu um, in the top right corner, and it allows you to pick the discoverable target that you'd like to view, uh, the recordings for. In the recordings view, you have the option to create, archive, edit labels, stop, and delete recording. To start a recording, just select the create button. After selecting create, we are taken to this page where users can select a name for the recording uh, and select a duration type. The duration types are continuous, which means that the recording will just keep collecting data until the application stops or Cresta itself stops. And archive on stop for users provide a duration for how long you'd like the recording to last for until it is stopped and then automatically archived. Uh, users can also select the event template. The default event templates are continuous in profiling and they work best with their uh, duration, respective duration types. Uh, users can also set labels for their recordings by selecting show metadata options. And this is just for increased ease of navigation um, in a larger number of recordings. For the sake of our demo, uh, I've selected a Minecraft so server target to create a recording in. Uh, I set a name, selected the duration type to be continuous. I'd like it to keep recording data. And uh, just a label. Once you've created the recording, you can see it listed under active recordings in the recordings view. They're listed with their name, start time, duration, uh, state, advanced options, and labels. It's not shown here, but this same recording is also created in the other target for the Minecraft server application. Since JFR is enabled per application, um, the same application will have the same recording. Earlier, I mentioned that JMC is a tool which helps you visualize um, the data inside your flight recordings. 
So here, if you expand on a recording, you can see the same automated analysis that you would find in JMC. Uh, the automated analysis analyzes your recording and assigns a severity score between 0 and 100 uh, to potential problems. This just reduces the need to switch between Tristat and JMC. By selecting the potential problem, there'll be a pop-up that shows the severity score, what the problem is, and how you can solve the problem or prevent it from happening in the future. Uh, so you can see while my Minecraft server pod is still up and running, if you take a look at the automated analysis for the recording I created, the only problem here is that I potentially might have exposed a password in the environment there. <laughs> okay. uh, Crystat also provides integration with Grafana through Grafana dashboards. Uh, and the Grafana dashboards present time series plots of curated metrics for your application. This can be viewed by selecting the three dot drop down menu in a recording and view in Grafana. You can interact with the dashboard by zooming in on certain time ranges to see exactly what is going on with these metrics at certain points. And the metrics include heap usage, CPU usage, threads, um, yeah, all the good stuff. In contrast to active recordings, which are stored on the containers themselves, archived recordings are stored in Kubernetes persistent volumes. Uh, archiving a recording can be done by creating an archive on stop type recording or by selecting on an active recording and selecting the archive button. This copies the JFR data from said recording into an archived recording file. You can access the archived recordings through the archived recordings tab in the recordings view or the archives view. Um, in the archives view, they are listed per target in the all targets tab, per application in the all archives tab, and users also have the ability to upload previously downloaded JFR recordings um, in instances where you, uh, your price app might have shut down or you uh, stopped it. Um, any previously downloaded recordings that you have can be re-uploaded to a new Crystat instance, so you don't have to re-record all the data. Okay, so I've waited a bit, and the Minecraft server has shut down as expected. We can go to the topology view and confirm this. There's no Minecraft server container in sight. Thanks to the Kubernetes persistent volume storage, the flight recordings that were archived in Cryostat are still there even after my application is no longer discoverable. You can access these recordings in the all archives view. So in this video, I've caught the exact moment when the Minecraft server shut down. You can see that the harvester is rapidly archiving some snapshot recordings. So you can see the events that are happening as the recording shuts down. And they disappear from the all targets view since the targets are no longer discoverable. But you can see them in the all archives view. Uh, they're listed with the Minecraft server's JVM ID. The recordings still have automated analysis and the Grafana dashboard. Typically, I would want to take a look at uh, like what the threads are doing towards the end of the recording. Just messing about with it here. Um, zooming in to the end to see what's going on with the CPU load, the threads. And you can hover over the graphs as well to see exactly what's going on at certain times. Uh, if the Grafana dashboard and automated analysis are not enough for you to ascertain exactly what went wrong in your recording, you can also download the recordings and upload them to JMC for further analysis. And this is what JMC looks like. So uh, Crystat can only visualize time series metrics. Anything else you would have to use JMC for. So you can see all the events that have been collected. And yeah. Now let me take you through some of the additional features in Crystat, and I'll go through um, oh, I'll go through all the views that I didn't get to go through in the demo. Uh, so here in the events view, you can see the listed default event templates and event types for each target. There's a lot of event types, and users can also create custom event templates. Uh, back to recording creation, if you don't want to create a custom flight recording, users can also create a snapshot recording. Snapshot is a conglomerate of all the data in the recordings for a specific target up until this point in time. So they are fixed in size and they don't continue recording. Um, they're most useful when you have a continuous recording and you'd like to see all the data that's been collected up until this point. 
Now let's say we want to create an automated rule to create recordings from multiple targets at once. I head over to the automated rules view and select the create button. Here users supply a name, a description, and a match expression. A match expression is a Java-like snippet of code which evaluates to a Boolean value. And any targets that match this match expression will be highlighted. So here the match expression is that the target's alias is Minecraft server. And you can see the Minecraft server targets are the ones that are highlighted as intended. Once the rule is created, you can see it listed in the automated rules view. You can also see the automatically created recordings in the recordings view under the targets. I also mentioned earlier that the agent's harvester will periodically collect recordings during the application's run. And in the archives view, we can see that that's, that's what's happening right now. Um, in this scenario, the maximum number of archived recordings that I've told it to store is three. And I want it to create a, archive a snapshot recording every five minutes. So you can see here in the target, um, you get the notification that a new snapshot has been archived and the oldest one has been deleted. Uh, if you'd like to see a high level view of your CryStat deployment and the target applications, you can head over to the dashboard view. And here users can curate a selection of dashboard cards, which are widgets that display information about CryStat and the applications. Users can adju adjust the size of these widgets and hover over them to see specific points on the graph. There's three different types of cards. There's the target JVM details cards that displays uh, properties about the target, the automated analysis card, which will create a recording and display the automated analysis for that recording, and the MB metrics card, which displays data on a single performance metric uh, of the JVM. And when you change the selected target, the same dashboard cards persist. It'll just show new information for that new target. Okay, that's it for me. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. <laughs> Great. If you'd like to um, go to our website or contribute to our upstream community. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to ask, did we ever figure out what was wrong with the Minecraft Ooh. server? Um, no, so that that actually occurred a couple years ago. I was just, I just recreated um, like a scenario of a container shutting down. Um, I couldn't find a bug in the Minecraft <laughs> server jar. Uh, if I could, that would have been a crazy presentation. Yeah. We'll refine it. Next time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, just a quick question about the Minecraft server. Yeah. Was that an actual like Minecraft server file or just a container image? Um, the yeah, I was using an like a Docker image that's available on GitHub. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do than just like than packaging it yourself. Okay. I would highly recommend. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's fair. Thank you.